Four years ago, I met the editors Will and Nick. I was invited to film the editing of the indie thriller Searching that became a box office hit. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a sequel called Missing, and again, I got an exclusive peek at the editing timelines. This is where we've been for the past two years almost. Oh, hi, I'm Sven. Awesome. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Just like the original, our protagonist is forced to find a loved one through a computer. I'm not giving up on my mom. Another group of assistants in here. This was mainly my room. Oh, nice. Corner office. Which, when it comes to the editing, requires to push the cinematic form yet again. This is our main editing station, and because of our After Effects finishing process, we had everyone working on computers, so we are just putting computers everywhere. But there was no Will or Nick. Last time I came here, Nick and Will were the editors. What happened? Why are they not the editors? Well, they're actually the writers and directors of this movie now. So they um, knew all about the process of how to make these types of movies. And when they brought us on, uh, they helped us figure out this complex workflow and this kind of crazy way of, of making a movie. And how did they find you? Did you go to the same film school? Or yeah, we all, we all kind of overlap in different ways from we all went to USC film schools, have been friends and been in touch. And so when it came time for them to higher editors, uh, they reach out to us. Missing versus searching. How's the franchise developing? So it's a, it's a sequel, it's a standalone sequel, but it's definitely taking place in the same universe as the first film. Uh, the idea is to take the same concept of storytelling, uh, searching for someone through a computer screen only. There's gotta be a way to find her. Escuchas. What are we going to do today? Today we're going to take you behind the scenes a little bit of our editing process and we can sort of like build on the scene here. So all of these elements were, you know, this pop piece of the chrome window is a separate element from the website itself. And obviously because this was in the background of the shot, we didn't bother filling in all of this copy. So we're only really filling in what can be seen. I think this film demands quite a unique process. I think Nick and Will uh, really get a lot of credit for figuring out what exactly that process was on the first film and uh, here on this second one we kind of had a leg up going into it using all of their knowledge. So this is a FaceTime call between our main character June and her mother Grace. I just said write it down, you're not writing it down. <sighs> Kevin boarded you the itinerary. No alcohol, do not open the door for strangers. And keep your location service turned on the entire time I'm away. Do you understand? No fun, got it. You can see here we have our timeline. So we actually built the whole wide like this and then used adjustment layers. So okay. what the adjustment layers are doing are essentially allowing us to, to build shots. So anytime there's a new stack of adjustment layers, we're cutting from one shot to another. So I want to go 200%, then we're there. We can move left and right. We can even, you know, create camera moves by using keyframes from point A to point B. And that's sort of how we were able to build the shots, so to say, mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the film. Any movement is done in Premiere or in After Effects? So we did everything in Premiere first. Um, we actually spent about six months working on the edit before they even went into production. Just dropping off dinner. Oh, thanks. How are you holding up? Oh, I'm fine. How's work? I brought some dinner for you. Oh, relax. How's it hanging? Oh, it's, it's fine. Um, how, how was work? So we were doing just a temp sort of a previs of the movie. Uh, and then we, once they went into production, we started switching out our temporary images with the real footage yeah. and finessing it that way. But yeah, it was, it was wild. We, we had already made a watchable version of the movie before they before even they shot. Oh yeah, there's Sorry, me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Different, the character names were different. Same idea of punching in for the, oh yeah, we had our turning off location services at one point. Ready for the week of a lifetime? You remember the cups, right? So yeah, yeah see, it's, it's a different okay. scene. There's a lot of different things going on, but it's kind of the same shape as. Can you help me unload actually? I'm out front. Uh, yeah, I guess. So this is kind of the way we sort of tempt everything out with just completely self-generated images. Oh, there's Nick, one of the directors. But so by the time we locked the film, the finished film, it was all just in premiere. Yeah. So we were, we were doing our camera moves here, we were doing our mouse moves here. Maybe we can play a clip in premiere to show how our 
offline looked and then show you how it looked in the finished film, which is after we brought it through the whole After Effects process. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a scene early on in the film which kind of introduces our main character, June, played by Storm Reid. And this is how it looked once we locked the film in Premiere. This was sort of our offline edit. Yes. Siri, call June. Oh my gosh. Mom. Siri. Please call Mom, June Mom, you're on the phone. This is FaceTime. Oh gosh, can you please do me a favor and clear your voicemail? I've been trying to leave you messages. It's kind of a little snippet in Premiere, and then once we took it through our whole After Effects finishing process, uh, dynamic linking everything from Adobe Premiere into Adobe After Effects and replacing all of our graphics one by one with really high res, really crisp graphics that were made in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of things were dialed in in After Effects. In terms of the storytelling, is there new elements you brought from searching how to tell that story through the computer? So the first film was about a dad searching for his missing daughter. In this case, we're dealing with a teenage girl searching for her missing mom. Uh, and I think one of the things that we all tried to figure out in the editing process was how to make it feel like we were seeing a teenager use a computer as opposed to an older parent who might not have as much technological skill. Oh, one more thing. I want to know about the final you took today. And so that, that is a big thing that is different in the storytelling here, is how adept our main character is at navigating the technology and how quickly she can get through a lot of crazy things uh, to, in her search to find clues. Yeah, so then, you know, after we brought it over to After Effects and put all the bells and whistles on it, this is how that same moment plays out. <laughs> Call June. Oh my gosh. Mom. Siri, please call Mom, June. Mom, you're on the phone. This is FaceTime. Oh. oh God. Can you please do me a favor and clear your voicemail? I've been Were there any visual effects artists on this? Oh, it's all you. We worked with a graphics team okay. to help us kind of build a lot of the bones of the assets and then we would be able to like manipulate it and fill things in. We had a team of incredible assistant editors who tag teamed and helped us throughout the whole two years. Awesome, all right, good yeah. stuff. You wanna take it over to After Effects? Our After Effects project is very much built the same way as uh, the first one, the searchings was. So you'll see here, uh, when you open a scene, it's broken up into these shots. Essentially, each one of these little rectangles is, is a new shot. And those mirror the adjustment layers that we used in Premiere. So if you were to step inside, then you reveal the wide of of the scene. And it's inside here that we brought in all of the different graphical elements and rebuilt the whole thing in high resolution. Every step of the way in every single scene we were constantly making sure that the way she was using the computer and the things we were seeing were reflective of the way a teenager would be navigating this world. And so one of the biggest and, and most fun sequences I think we got to work on was this big party sequence. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a fun scene to try to figure out how to cover where, like, the mouse is constantly darting, flying around. You know, you close a window, you reveal he the character of Heather behind. It was fun to sort of make that scene feel a little bit lyrical, especially as it comes in the midst of this bigger montage. Mm -hmm. I love that shot where the older lady called Heather goes back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they, they staged it that well. Yeah, and yeah. if you notice there was a glitch there when she's crossing behind her and that we're combining takes there to oh, make sure, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how much the glitching can help us in the edit, and I think people watch it, and it just looks like, you know, how a real life FaceTime video kind of glitches out sometimes, mm -hmm. and they don't really think much of it. What camera was the FaceTime camera? Most of the FaceTime, the main camera, was a, a Sony A7S III. No Alexa, no nothing. No, some of the news footage was shot, I think, like on the red at one point, mm -hmm. and we have drone footage, we have security camera footage, we have... iPhone few, footage. Yeah, a few different things that, yeah, some some iPhone stuff was actually used, but um, the majority of the FaceTime stuff, I think, was the Sony A7S. Mm -hmm. And is this your first feature film? This is my first narrative, kind of like bigger studio film, yeah. yeah I've come from like a lot of commercials and documentaries, and okay. this is sort of the first big kahuna. Yeah, I've done a lot of indie indie stuff and a yeah. couple of features as well, but nothing this uh, big. Any advice for aspiring editors? How can they replace you? 
<laughs> yes, please. Yeah, please. The thing I always like to say, you know, everyone has their own path and there's this industry is so weird and there's no kind of like right answer or right path. I, I always like to say I think the best thing is just to say yes to opportunities that come up. I think the more you do, the more people you work with, the, the more experience you have cutting and learning and the more, you know, connections you make and you never know, you know, it could be years and years down the line where someone you met a decade earlier reaches out to you for something and that does happen and yeah. has happened so yeah. I just think like saying yes to stuff and even if it's scary and daunting like frankly this was for us we figured it out you learn on the job and you just see where it goes from there. How do you balance skill versus soft skills knowing people or being comfortable getting to know people? When I was first transitioning from assistant editor to editor I would get so nervous every time I had to sit in a room with clients or with directors you know like the more you do I think the more comfortable you feel with kind of that more social side of being an editor. How do you rate the decision to go to USC to this whole thing? In my experience, every job I have ever gotten has come in some way or another from a connection at USC. I do feel like the connections you make with those people, that's what really matters in this industry is, is making connections with people and it leads to things a lot of the time, you know? I don't think it has to be any film school in particular. I do think having an interest in film, going to a film school just puts you around a bunch of other people that are also interested. I've gotten work just cold emailing a director before and being like, hey, I love your work. Let me know if I can edit. And that doesn't always you know, work out, but sometimes it does. You can teach yourself anything. You know, you can really do anything without needing a program to take you through it. Like kids these days know so Everyone much can make a movie about, like, yeah. like it, they can like make YouTube videos, TikToks, all this stuff like instantly. We did not have a lot of those tools yeah, yeah. available as easily. What would be the best strategy to find a network that can help each other? Reaching out to people whose work resonates with you. You know, my first internship, it was at a commercial editing company. I was like, hey, can I please be an intern here? And they were kind of like, oh, we don't really have internships. And I sort of was like, don't worry about it. Like, I'll just be in the back. You won't even notice me and kind of like, almost forced your way in a little bit. Grabbing your friends who are also interested in being like, let's make something. It's so easy to make anything now. Making something great is hard. And I think even the best, best, best filmmakers don't always make things that are great, but putting in the practice and like starting to make those things early and yeah. failing early. I would say it's it's more than even just the, the job opportunities. It's making sure when you're not working a job, you're still finding the time to do the thing you love because it's practice and eventually down the line, if you just say, oh, I want to edit and you never edit anything, that's, you know, but if you're doing it on your own, which is what I always did, you know, in between anything I did after graduating college, I was just constantly trying to, to make as much of my own stuff as I could. Were you writing your own stuff? I've directed a, a very low budget, like indie feature film. Are you from LA or came to LA? I'm from LA. I'm from Kansas originally. What would you advise people that are starting out? Should they come to LA or not? I don't think you need to. Like obviously LA has a bunch of stuff going on all the time, but so does Atlanta. Like they're shooting constantly around Atlanta. So does Kansas City. They're, Kansas yeah. City, Vancouver, like all these places are these, you know, new kind of hubs of filmmaking and wherever there's a group of people making stuff, there's somewhere in there is opportunity. Well, thanks guys. I hope we're gonna see some of the window in these shots, <laughs> it's so beautiful. As you may have noticed, I am completely addicted to making content on YouTube. No other platform allows me to tell any story at any length. And if I do it well enough, find an audience without a studio, network, or boss telling me what to do. But here's the key. What your video is about is almost less important than how you tell that story. And I've learned so much about editing, storytelling and filmmaking by actually applying what I know from being a professional film editor to YouTube and then adapting. So I've worked with the team at Edit Mentor to build a brand new interactive program. I challenge you to test your storytelling skills that you need to be a solid and authentic creator. Don't just listen to me share my best principles, but apply them immediately in interactive challenges so that the learning really sinks in. For a limited time, we're gonna make you a special offer. Get my YouTube Kickstarter for a special price. Click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and happy editing. Even with a filmmaking background, my first videos were not good. Today, I think of them as part of the learning process. 
We'll break down my story structure further in a future lesson.